Hello and welcome to Polytrope, the podcast of many twists and turns. I'm your host, Nick Barr, coming to you on a Tuesday afternoon in the middle of the workday. I thought I'd try something fun and just throw us into the middle of some thinking that I'd been doing today and um, see how it goes. We've got people coming in and out, so apologies in advance for any distractions. We've been thinking quite a bit lately about forms of feedback and ways to evaluate creative work, ways to crowdsource that evaluation and scale that evaluation um, such that um, Maybe you run a contest and maybe there's tens or hundreds of thousands of submissions. How do you begin to meaningfully evaluate, provide feedback for, and compare all those submissions? Um, And so within that larger context, uh, I was playing with an idea. So we'll take a We'll take a prompt like the one above, come up with an innovation to social distancing that's ambitious, feasible, and original. So this is a variation of a prize that Tyler Cowen is running through Emergent Ventures. The variation that I've done is rendered explicit, like how we would evaluate it, right? So. It's going to be evaluated on how ambitious it is, how feasible it is, and how original it is. And um, let's just say that there are many, many submissions, uh, many, many innovations being submitted to this prize, more than Tyler could possibly sift through. So how would we begin to do that? And it's a huge question with lots of ins and lots of outs. Of course, it matters who the evaluators are. Um, For now, I'm just putting all that to the side and thinking about an interface for evaluation. And so probably the most naive, simple interface would be uh, maybe three sliders. How ambitious is it? All the way to the left, it's not ambitious. All the way to the right, it's very ambitious. Feasible, same thing. And original, same thing. So you might have three sliders and you might dial those sliders up and down as you see fit. Um, So limitations to that approach. Um, One is now now I have three interactions. They're not particularly heavy. Um, Another challenge is I have no sense of how those variables relate to each other. So in particular with ambition and feasibility, um, oftentimes those things are at odds with each other, right? Something that's very ambitious is not likely to be feasible. Something that's very feasible is not likely to be ambitious. Okay. So a two by two matrix can help there. Um, That's what we have here. So maybe I can map this on a two by two matrix. Uh, The only problem there is I've lost originality. And so maybe I have one slider and one two by two matrix. But, and this is where, this is where all ideas go to die is in a 3D canvas. I wondered what would a two by two by two matrix look like? And so that's what we have here is if I rotate this, um, a way of looking at originality, ambition, and feasibility all in one space such that um, perhaps the prompt is where, which cube um, does this response belong to? So imagine I'm, I'm evaluating some paper or some submission and I might choose the cube, choose the quadrant that um, that this belongs to. And of course, these colors are arbitrary and ugly. We could have sort of a fine-grained 
option here, we could have many, many cubes instead of just two per, per variable. And, and I mean, that's kind of interesting. I say that ideas go to die on the, on the 3D editor because I noticed that a lot of a lot of ideas feel like they're 3D until you put them here and then you're like, this isn't right at all. I think there's something about 3D that's like, it's, it's blessing and it's curse is that it like, it doesn't play tricks. So, so what I mean by that is like, I think there's something cool about this theory. So, okay, let's, you're presented with this two by two matrix. How ambitious is it? How feasible is it? And maybe I, maybe I place my dot right here. It would be cool if there was some rotation, some trick where it's like, great, now how original it is. And maybe there's a slider here. But th that's not what's going on here. This, this cube just wants to be interacted with, like honestly. And so there's no really like way to, easy way to unfold logically. Um, I'm thinking about Monument Valley, you know, and how Monument Valley has these sort of aha moments. There's there's trickery at work with that. That's really 2D sort of with 3D um, hints. And that's sort of how mobile interfaces in general work with parallax or with perspective changes. This is just a this is a freaking cube. So I think this this sort of interaction only works if I was able to manipulate this 3D cube and then drop a, a dot into that space. So maybe it's in this green cube, which is very ambitious, very feasible, and very original. I think one one appeal about 3D space is it allows us to now look at this entire cube and, and think about distribution. And I, I don't have the skills to quickly show that in a cool way, but you can imagine a sort of heat map. And for now, I'll just like stick in like 5% here. But you can imagine a much cooler visualization of letting you know that like, hey, if you're going to put this up here, know that like very few items are ever going to end up in that quadrant that most things are going to be maybe very ambitious, but not feasible, somewhat original, sort of, to sort of land in this upper right, deepest, most corner of the cube is a very special thing indeed. And that's kind of interesting, like these lightweight indicators of kind of the neighborhood. That's just not possible with sliders. I suppose with sliders, you could have like a little percentile hint. So I'm turning the three knobs and saying, well, this would put it in the 80th percentile, this would put it in the 99th percentile. So I suppose there's ways to render that information visible, but not in a, not in a meaningful way. Uh, it would sort of be invisible. Whereas like a heat map, a three-dimensional heat map here would presumably show some deep relationship between ambition and feasibility. Um, but there's still there's still so much wanting uh, with this interface. One of the things that we would probably expect to see is no matter what we do to hint that this elite cube is uncommon, things would just get sort of get thrown in there. And so what you might end up wanting to do is actually sort of swim into that cube and move things around in that space. I just grabbed a screenshot, so it doesn't really matter what this is. Um, but now you're working in very close quarters. So this is another thing that oftentimes happens to me in 3D space is like you did all this thinking. They're like, oh, actually, I just want to like I just want to live in the editor. So like imagine now we're inside the cube. The editor is inside the cube. I'll turn the grid back on. If I can remember how to do that. Um, so over here, I'm just playing with two objects that are in relation to each other. And so think of this as submission A and submission B. And again, with the editor here, you have these perfectly usable sliders already along three axes. Um, and I could just sort of say, well, well, put A and B in relation to each other. So submission A and submission B, well, maybe submission 
B is um, quite a bit more original, um, but it's much less feasible. And uh, it's actually not all that ambitious, like I did the math. And despite its originality, I wouldn't expect it to have a huge scope. Um, so now in, in inside of this imagined elite cube, I have submission A and submission B in relation to each other. That'd be quite interesting to see more submissions and actually start to map them in 3D space. Um, Peer Studio is doing interesting work there, uh, not in 3D space, but basically having submissions be ordered through comparison, basically sort of like hot or not for creative work. Um, and so as I like kind of end this thought experiment, I just, it's, it's interesting to think about the sliders themselves that are at work with this. So we kind of deliberately went away from the very naive approach of let's say three interactions. How feasible is it? How ambitious is it? How original is it? Very, um, very simple to implement demands three actions of the user and each action has like very little cognitive load. Putting a submission in a 3D cube of originality, ambition, and feasibility is one interaction. Humongous cognitive load. Um, and incredibly rich in terms of I would say like reliability in comparison, there, there's just truth to it because of course, if you're gonna map it in space, you're forced to like reckon with its neighborhood in a way that w wouldn't be the case with with sliders. Um, and I think it's a somewhat more truthful way of, potentially truthful way of grappling with comparing ideas, which is to sort of say that like, I don't know, is yellow better than orange here? I'm not sure if it's easy to say, like, if it's better, it's certainly more feasible. It's not significantly less ambitious. Um, and with those sorts of, like, navigation structures, I feel like they maybe speak better to the ambiguities of, like, ill-defined problems in general. Um, and we might find that they actually produce the easiest kind of thing to navigate for, let's say a Tyler or for a selector, which is to sort of say like, hey, we mapped all the submissions in this three dimensional space that now you can navigate such that when you see one, you're like, yeah, I like that, but I'd like to see something a little more feasible and I'm okay if it's less ambitious. You kind of know exactly where to go next. And so I think one enduring value proposition of something uh, complex like this is it sort of just immediately yields information space that's valuable to selectors. And so I'm using quite a bit of jargon here. But if you think about crowdsourcing feedback, um, how do you make that feedback uh, navigable? And um, thinking out loud, like, is that any better than a spreadsheet? I mean, a spreadsheet could generate a bunch of numbers. And so I could say like, well, I want something a little bit higher on this column and a little bit lower on that column. But I just don't yet see how it produces um, neighborhoods in the way that these visualizations do course you can just render a chart from a spreadsheet and so maybe I think I still don't know whether it's worth having people generate sort of this multi-dimensional feedback or whether holding their hand or in wizard like styles taking them one at a time through each dimension um, and uh, that's where I'm at. I don't, I still don't know. Uh, I do enjoy bringing my ideas to die on the 3D canvas table. Um, and I wish 
they didn't take so long to visualize here, but it's still a kind of a fun way of working and a humbling way of working because there's some like cognitive trick. I don't know that goes on where like, at least in my mind, maybe not other minds, but like things feel so appealing until you put them out on on 3d and then they sort of they sort of uh fall apart in a very <laughs> a very humbling way um so i'm just sharing this in the spirit of a little bit of well i, I suppose this is just noise but I wonder if it's interesting to anyone. I wonder if other people have 3D modeling workflows that do work for them. And I wonder if anyone connects to that sort of, um, it's almost like a dreamlike quality where like you have a dream and it makes sense and then you tell someone the dream, you're like, oh, it doesn't it doesn't quite add up. Oftentimes that's, that's what happens here. And it almost, I just feel like it says something almost deep about cognition that I can't quite access in this moment because I'm, I'm so in it. Okay, that's it for now.